thank you so much for the introduction, Quan. Yeah, so today I'm going to talk about uh, recent work uh, about streaming uh, facility location in high dimension. So this is a joint work with Arthur Chumai, Robert Kofgamer, Pablo Vasali, and Min Wei Yang. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the problem definition first. So facility location problem is a classical problem in computer science and related areas. Uh, usually the input is assumed to be in a, a metric space, basically Euclidean RD. Uh, that's called this data set P. And then uh, we are also given an opening cost F. Uh, and the objective is to open a set of so-called facilities, which is simply a set of points in RD. And we, we aim to minimize uh, the connection cost to the facilities and the opening cost. So the connection cost is basically the sum of distance for every data point to the nearest facility. And the opening cost is simply the number of open facilities times by the opening cost. Uh, since we use the same opening cost for every facility that is open, so this is also called the uniform facility location. And there is a related setting where this one is non-uniform. And for us, we consider this uniform setting. Uh, so here's the illustration of the things. And, uh, yeah, so here, let's say uh, we open four uh, facilities, and these red crosses are the data sets. So basically, the connection cost is the distance from these uh, uh, red crosses to the nearest uh, facility like this. And then you times, uh, and then the opening cost is four times L. So that's the problem definition. Uh, for us, we actually consider um, a geometric streaming setting. Uh, instead of the uh, traditional approximation algorithm where we care about the, the time. So uh, specifically, we consider the discrete input. So this is basically a consideration of the space. Uh, we assume that the data points is a subset of the grid uh, RD. So basically one to delta for some parameter delta to the power of D, which is a sort of some hypercube. And then P, uh, this data point, we assume is given in a dynamic stream means that you can insert some point and then insert again and delete some previously inserted uh, point. And eventually the P that we refer to is the point set that end up with after the stream ends. And our computation will be with respect to the, uh, uh, the, the resultant P uh, after this dynamic stream. Um, and since we consider streaming algorithms, uh, we mainly care about this space uh, where ideally we want a polylog in this uh, data points uh, down to the D, which is poly D log delta. And uh, this is also, okay, so this D log delta is also the size of a word. So basically we want uh, the space to be only polynomial in the size of a word. Uh, so here the output, uh, okay, so this output requires some attention. So we only re report some estimation, uh, which is some non active real for the optimal value instead of the whole solution because the whole solution can take, uh, uh, can like open many facilities and that can be as many as data to the D, which is too many. And we only care about this uh, value, estimating the value. And uh, so similarly, we can define this alpha approximation uh, uh, by, uh, by saying that the estimation is between opt and as most alpha times opt. Note that if you care about the approximation algorithms, then you, you basically only want this uh, upper bound uh, because you know, in approximate algorithm, you always return a feasible solution. But here we, we need to add, estimate the value. So we also need to make sure the value is not underestimated as well. So that's the setting. Uh, are there any questions? All right. So yeah. So previously this uh, geometric setting has been studied and uh, actually is proposed by a work by Indy. Uh, and it, it seems that all the previous work uh, can be divided into two space regimes. Uh, I call it high dimensional regime where uh, the space is poly D and another is a low dimensional uh, regime where the space usage is uh, exponential in D. Uh, and I don't see anything in between. So yeah, so for the high dimensional regime, um, so this index 04 is the uh, original paper that proposed this setting. And uh, it proposes uh, uh, four sort of benchmark problems for this setting, where they study MST, minimal spanning tree, 
matching key media and uniform facility location, which we also study. And for all of them, they obtain order D log delta approximation. approximation. Uh, okay, so and then, uh, you know, recent stock paper, uh, main most spanning tree and a smaller distance um, is also studied, and the ratio is order log n. Uh, so, Earth more distance is basically Euclidean by chromatic mean cost matching. Uh, okay, so not so many results in high dimension, but uh, the study in low dimension is much more successful. Uh, even though we, we require space exponential in D, uh, the, the approximation ratio can be dramatically improved to one plus epsilon for many problems. For instance, the UFL that we consider indeed have a one plus epsilon, uh, polylog n times to the D space algorithm. And then in another paper, uh, many max version of the problem means max part uh, and max spanning tree, uh, max match and so on. Uh, they can do uh, one plus epsilon, epsilon as well. And for minimum spanning tree is also one plus epsilon. Um, and for the harder, sort of harder problems, uh, other one approximation is possible for Earth's more distance and standard forest, which is our recent paper. Uh, right. But then, as you can see, there's a gap, right? So um, for the low dimensional regime, you can all, you can often do order one or one plus epsilon approximation. But can we do the same for high dimensional uh, case? Or we show it's impossible. So this is the one of the like outstanding challenge in the area. Um, so technically, uh, um, so technically, all these works uh, that I mentioned basically use the same technique called shifted quad tree. Um, so this is a fundamental structural technique for geometric algorithm design. So uh, this shifted quad tree is actually uh, conceptually simple. So think about two dimensions. You basically first find a bounding box of the whole data set and then you subdivide it by four even uh, subsquares and then divide, uh, continue to divide it recursively until um, the squares is far enough. Basically only contains some singleton uh, data point. So that's the quad tree. And then uh, you also maybe want to use some randomness uh, by shifting it in uh, X and Y axis. So this is a, a very classical uh, structure used in many geometric algorithms. Uh, the notable case is uh, Aurora and Mitchell's gold or price paper uh, that gives a p-test for TSP is based on this. And then also um, for many, like, uh, as I said, many of these previously mentioned algorithms also is also based on this quad tree, especially for the low dimension algorithms. Uh, but in high dimension, this uh, quad tree is not very efficient. Uh, for instance, in two dimension, you can see it's very clear. You have four subsquares. But if it's in high, higher D dimension, then the number of child, child, square, child squares, if you do this even subdivision, will be two to the D, which is too much. And then, uh, so, so basically people don't directly use this uh, number of uh, child squares, but, but then you can also use this to yield a tree, the so-called tree embedding. So basically tree embedding is a, a mapping that maps this original data set RD in RD uh, into a set of randomized trees. So you can solve the problem in trees. Uh, and this quad tree is one way to do that. But the thing is that uh, uh, there's a lower bound in this uh, distortion of the tree embedding, which means that if you use this tree embedding, then you cannot get a constant approximation. Uh, but unfortunately, this tree embedding seems to be, to be the only technique uh, applicable to high dimension uh, per previous work. Uh, so our main technical question here is how to bypass the tree embedding uh, for, for instance, for, for, for at least some of these benchmark problems uh, proposed by Indic. Uh, so that's our motivation. And our main result is uh, upper and lower bounds for the uh, uniform facility location in high dimension. And uh, the, the, most of, like the, the most interesting result is uh, uh, these two, where we, uh, we achieve constant approximation uh, for arbitrary order two pass or randomized uh, uh, input, but only one pass streaming algorithms. Uh, and the space is poly log delta. Uh, okay, so this order one ratio, as I said, cannot be uh, obtained by tree embedding because there's a distortion lower bound. And we also note that uh, 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 
even for two parts of random order, all these uh, restrictions to inviting cannot have, cannot give a better than omega log n ratio as well. And this is also the sort of the first uh, work that we are aware of that takes the advantage of two parts of random order in geometric setting. Um, furthermore, for the classical case where you only uh, require one pass to the uh, data set, we have d to the 1.5 approximation. Uh, this actually improves over the previous work. For instance, uh, index has a d log square delta where this uh, log data is usually considered to be larger than D. So we improve this. And then uh, compare with this one plus epsilon ratio. Um, so it's not directly comparable, but when we talk about high dimensional case, then their exponential in this space is not uh, favorable. So basically uh, our algorithm is the best one uh, for UFL in hiding high dimension. Uh, eventually we also show a, a lower bound. Uh, which uh, uh, this lower bound is for one pass insertion only stream. And even for this uh, very special case, uh, like very strong requirement, uh, we show that constant approximation. If you want some constant approximation, then you really need to treat the quality log delta space. So this basically rules out the possibility to have one plus epsilon in high dimension. And this also justifies this uh, uh, exponential dependence in D for the one plus epsilon approximation in low dimension. So uh, yeah, those are our results. Uh, and we'll be focusing on the our first two results. So technically, uh, how do we obtain these results is, uh, okay, so it's actually logically simple. We base on our result, we base on a, 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 a offline approximation proposed by Matthew and Plaxton. So the so-called MT approximation. Um, so conceptually, they do the following. So for every data point P, they compute an RP value, which is some estimation of how important this P is. And then between this F over N to F, F is the opening cost. And then they show that the sum of these RPs is order one times the opt. Uh, and it would mean that if we get an estimation of this sum P of RP, then we are done for our, um, for our purpose. We want a constant approximation, right? So very simple. So then it remains to see how this RP is defined. So uh, the exact definition is complicated, but let me uh, uh, just talk about the approx the uh, the constant the constant approximate version that we use in our paper. So roughly speaking, uh, this RP value is uh, one over two to the i if and only if the ball uh, centered at p with radius RP is uh, constant two to the i points. Um, so here, actually, this one over two to the i should be f to the two to the i, but for simplicity, uh, in the remainder of the talk, we just assume f equals one. Uh, and then this is the definition of the ball, which is uh, sort of standard, right? So uh, you basically, this bxr is the set uh, of y that has distance at most r to x. Um, so yeah, so you can see that, uh, so yeah, so here this example gives you some intuition about uh, what's this rp. Right. For instance, a small RP means this BPRP will be very dense, right? Because one over two to the I is small means two to the I is large. On the other hand, if you have a large RP around this P, then it means that this ball is very sparse. Uh, and furthermore, from this, you can also see that this RP is some is unique because uh, when you increase the radius around this uh, P, uh, then the requirement of RP is sort of increasing, uh, right? So because R is increasing, uh, is decreasing, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, okay, okay, so, so here let's just look at RP, yeah. So if RP is larger, then the requirement of this ball is uh, uh, smaller. So it means that if, if I have a larger RP, then I want a, a sparse B, but then this ball uh, is uh, uh, contains more and more points when you increase this RP. So it means that, if you increase this uh, RP, then the requirement is uh, decreasing, but the size of the ball is increasing. So the two will meet at some RP. So and that RP will be our unique RP. So this RP is well defined and it reflects the density around this point. Um, and then there's a natural algorithm for computing this RP. Uh, for instance, you can basically uh, count the number of ball, uh, number of points in this uh, 
uh, both of geomet geometrically increasing radius. Um, and then you can just uh, find the I such that uh, satisfies this uh, claim. Um, and trivially, you can implement this in streaming when P is given in advance, because you can then just maintain sort of login counters to count how many points in each of these four. Um, yeah, but then, okay, so, but then what if P is given as a query? So, so uh, why do I care about this? We'll be clear in the next slide. So, um, so as a query means that this P is only given after the stream ends. You don't know what P is in advance. So that is a query. But what if I give you P as a query? So um, the conclusion is that uh, um, it indeed re like requires omega n space for any uh, good approximation. So the reason is that, uh, so note that by this definition, if I just uh, put one point, one isolated point here, then this RP is one. But if I put uh, T copies of the same point at uh, the same place, but then it's isolated from others, then RP is one over T. So what does that mean? It means that you can use uh, these uh, gadgets to encode any binary vector. For instance, if you see a, a zero in a binary vector, then you just uh, put some point with one multiplicity. But if you see one, then you put T of them. Then if you can estimate every RP up to some factor, then you can distinguish whether a certain coordinate is one or zero, which is obviously cannot be done in low space. So that's why you cannot uh, uh, estimate RP as a query. Um, so yeah, so given these observations, so we have this uh, overall plan for estimating our uh, sum of RP uh, by sampling. Basically, we we can estimate this by sampling, right? So it's a sum. We, like we just estimate the sum. So um, since we cannot answer uh, RP as a query, so we have to do this in two parts. Uh, in the first part, we will draw a set of M samples. And the second part, we basically compute the RP value for these samples uh, because this P will be uh, knowing it in advance for the second part. Uh, so that's the overall plan. But then the outstanding question is how do we sample? Uh, natural idea here, maybe you want to say, okay, what about let's just do some uniform sample? Basically, you want to sample some P hat uh, uniformly at random. And then, of course, this estimation of RP hat is unbiased. Just uh, up to a factor of n. And then a standard technique is to use churn of bond, you just average over m samples, and then you will have a video probably like this. Uh, but the thing is that you want this, uh, um, this m over n times the sum of rp to be large enough in order to have a good video probability. But the thing is that uh, we can really have this sum p of rp to be very small. Uh, and uh, this is exactly, uh, we talk about an exact, a, a concrete example of card instance like in this slide. So the intuition here is that uh, the hard instance is uh, we we plant some isolated points, but the, the number of the, the number of them is small, uh, and plant mix it with a lot of other uh, sort of concentrated points. Um, so and then these isolated points is hidden. But then we also want those isolated points to contribute a lot to the cost. So how do we do that? So basically, our instance looks like this. So we define two, two subsets of points, P1 and P2. And for this P1, we only have U10 uh, points, uh, which is very small, and we like them to be well isolated. So their RP value will be 1. And then for P2, uh, P2 will consist of the, the remaining points of the N points. And then we, we make them to be very concentrated, like the pairwise distance is 1 over n. So their RP value will be roughly 1 over n, n, right? But then if you count the sum of RP of this, then all these root n points will contribute uh, uh, root n in total. And then the P2 will contribute only order 1. So the cost will be dominated by, the, uh, by, the, uh, uh, by these uh, isolated points. So uh, in other words, it, if you do uniform sampling, uh, then you really need to sample maybe root n uh, samples, draw root n samples in order to even witness any RP plus one. So that's the difficult instance. And this really makes this uh, sum of RP relatively small. So what do we do? Uh, then uh, we actually use another sort of standard or um, uh, uh, like general framework. Uh, 
So here actually we are going to estimate the sum of some number AIs. Uh, and this is a general question. And uh, here we can actually use the important sampling. So the important sampling framework, so this is different from uniform sampling, right? So important sampling asks us to sample to, to define mu i. So this mu i is a probability of sampling i uh, with respect to the contribution of AI. With, so contribution is a measure against the sum of AIs. And we also allow an error of estimation. Uh, so let's say mu i, each of the probability mu i satisfies this. Then uh, the important sample is simply samples with respect to this probability distribution. And eventually uh, you uh, sort of renormalize uh, the estimator by one over, one over mu i hat. Um, and this is to make sure uh, the estimation is unbiased. And a standard argument shows that uh, the variance of this estimator is low. Uh, provided that your error lambda is bounded. Um, and, and of course, you can then apply maybe Bernstein's or Chebyshev's uh, uh, inequalities to boost the failure probability. So basically, uh, you can draw one over lambda samples uh, uh, to achieve a very small error with a constant probability. So that's our uh, main uh, framework. So, so, we, so we'd like to apply this important sampling on top of this uh, sum of RPs. Uh, but then uh, it's not without issues. For instance, here's a chicken versus egg problem. So straightforward, uh, so straightforwardly, you want to just estimate the contribution of AIs, but then as a query, you cannot estimate this RP, right? So, but then you you also don't know what RPs, what RPs to choose in advance, uh, because it really depends on its contribution. And furthermore, since we consider streaming, then we have added difficulty. The standard sampling tools fail to sample with respect to RP values. They usually uh, sample with respect to the frequency of every point. Uh, so we really need to uh, do the sampling with respect to the geometry. Uh, so that comes to our new technical idea, which is geometric uh, important sampling. So in a high level, we want to first uh, sort of modify the input a, a bit. We want to find a data oblivious hash function uh, that maps the, the RD to RD. And then we want to sample uniformly on the mapped data set. Uh, so we call some uh, uh, fine, fine inverse of Y as a bucket. This is a sort of standard in hashing. And then, okay, so what do we need for this hashing? So we want that for those isolated points, we want it to stay in, a, in its own bucket. So we don't want them to be mixed. And then for those very concentrated, we want them to collide. Basically, we want them, even though there are a lot of them, we want them to belong to a, only a few number of unique buckets. So after this, uh, if so, after this, the number of buckets after uh, this uh, hashing will be the number of points with R equals one plus clusters of these uh, dense points. Uh, if we can control this number of clusters uh, for R equals one over n then you can just do a uniform sampling and with good probability, you will hit some point with R equals one. Yeah, so basically here, we uh, basically need this uh, uh, hash function. So uh, specifically the hash function is like this. So we want uh, the hash function, okay, so, so there are two main parameters of this hash, uh, gamma and lambda. Uh, so first we want this hash function to be of diameter one, bounded diameter uh, for every bucket. And we, we also want the consistency, where for every small subset means that the diameter is one over this gamma, which is, which we call gap. Uh, we, we have that number of buckets that this S gets mapped to is bounded by lambda. And by the way, here, uh, this one can be arbitrary. So this we can scale. And for this talk, we only uh, focus on the diameter one. And our main uh, technical uh, lemma is that there exists such a consistent hashing scheme where you, you uh, where this consistency is d plus one and this uh, gap is poly d. Um, so this is actually highly non-trivial because if you think about the classical poly tree, uh, then it's hardly useful for this uh, to bound this consistency. For instance, in RD, if you consider some region around this intersection of small neighborhood of hypercubes, then it could intersect to the d squares. 
which results to gamma, lambda equals to the which is not clear. Um, and uh, this hash, if, if we have this consistent hashing, then we can actually use it to solve our hard instance like this. So yes, so basically this, uh, because the diameter bound is one, so these isolated points get to their own bucket, and the consistency also uh, guarantees that all these uh, like concentrated small um, small uh, like concentrated points is ma mapped to d plus one buckets. Um, so there's also a gap uh, in this hash. Uh, how does that come into play? So yeah, so our hard is that it is actually very special and uh, slightly more general. Uh, we might have a uh, uh, sort of still isolated, but uh, uh, larger RP, uh, like smaller RP values, uh, like here, right? So we still as want to estimate the number of points with RP equals one, but then let's say now we also have some points with RP half, one over four, and so on. Um, so what's the, what's the problem is that, uh, uh, so since our hash uh, can only be applied if the diameter of the cluster is small, uh, if the cluster is, is of diameter one or gamma to one, then we cannot apply this. So how do we do that? We, we basically uh, prove a structural lemma showing that we can sort of uh, recluster the data set into uh, clusters such that every points in every cluster have the same RP value. So uh, and the, the real important profit is that for every subset else in this clustering, um, we have that the number of points is at most one over the diameter of S. So still here, this one should be some opening cost, but let's say the opening cost is one. And uh, this is crucial for the case of a uh, uh, larger diameter. And both this consistency and, and gap will be helpful in bounding the number of buckets. And eventually we can show that the number of non-empty buckets is bounded by uh, this number polylog times all. And so that would mean that if the number of points with RP equals one uh, is, is large enough, then you can do a, a, like a, using a sort of polylog number of samples to efficiently find it. Um, yeah, so, so that's the basic idea. And uh, so, so specifically here, we actually need to do a two level uniform sampling in, in our way down. Uh, first, we need to sample a uniform bucket from the uh, mapped or hashed the data set. And then we do a uniform sample on, on, on the sample bucket to find uh, the element P. Uh, as the like which we will use for the estimation. Um, yeah, so and in streaming this two level uniform sampling uh, can be implemented uh, by a new uh, two level L0 sampler. Uh, so basically, we want a streaming algorithm that do, does the following. So uh, we want uh, L, a streaming algorithm to maintain a frequency matrix M. And uh, we want to we want to return a uniform non-zero row ID, and then also a now uniform uh, a, a uniform non-zero column ID without, within the row that we uh, sample. So basically, for instance, the two-level sampler is like this. So, so so think about this five by five matrix. Uh, so this a two three equals three is sampled with probability one or four times one or three. So this one or four is for the non-empty rows, and the one or three is for the non-empty uh, columns. You can also think of it as a adjacent matrix, uh, like adjacency ma matrix, where here we want to sample a non-isolated vertex U, then we sample a uniform neighbor of U, right? So that's uh, what we need for the two-level uh, sampling as we part here. And the implementation is basically a, a nested L0 sampler. So we uh, sort of, so L0 sampler is a standard tool in streaming and that basically only draw a uniform sample from uh, 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 the, the support of a frequency vector. So we basically, uh, for every frequency in this vector, we encoded another L0 sampler to represent the column. So, and, uh, and this in total will only use polylog space and uh, basically return the, 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 the true level sample. Um, yeah, so with all these ingredients, we actually uh, can prove the important sampling theorem. Basically, saying that we have a one-pass streaming algorithm 
that can return a sample x such that x is sampled with probability 1 over polylog times the uh, contribution of its rx value. Um, and with this, we can immediately have the true path streaming algorithm because we can first do this important sampling in the first stream, uh, in the first pass, and then in the second pass, we compute the RP value. Um, right, so, so this true pass algorithm can also be combined together to uh, one, one, top, one pass algorithm, but under the random order. So the idea here is that we, for the random order stream, we, uh, for the first pass, we, okay, for the first half, we denote by J, we run the sampling, and then for the second half, we run the, uh, uh, like, computing the value of the sample point. Um, yeah, so, so basically, so here, the randomness ensures that these two parts are somewhat correlated, so that you can uh, relate them to the whole, uh, whole, whole instance. Uh, but the analysis is now trivial. You, you can, you actually cannot do a black box reduction to see that any two passes or with them can be combined in one pass. We really need some special structure of the problem. Um, okay. So, so let me talk about something about our one pass arbitrary order, um, or with them. So, um, so the, the immediate difficulty is that we cannot compute the RP value for the sample P since it's given as a very. So it's difficult to sort of using the previous important sampling to directly obtain a one pass orbital. So our alternative approach is to do a collective estimator, but which is also coarse in this case by, for, by only doing a one level sample from the buckets, just a sample bucket. And then we just test whether the entire bucket has a large RP or not. And we pretend the entire bucket has the same large RP value. So the difficulty here is that we only manage to test if the bucket has an RP value at least one over the gap. So here the gap comes into play. And this gap uh, like translates into our approximation. So basically, uh, we show, uh, so this d to the 1.5 is uh, actually uh, can be replaced by the gamma. Uh, in the hash function. So in other words, if you have a better hash function, then you have a better approximation ratio. And here is our uh, real result. Basically, we show is order gamma approximation uh, instead of this d, d, to, d to the 1, 1.5. And we also need that the consistency is poly d. Um, yeah, so since this consistent, consistent hashing is very important, uh, let's uh, discuss this consistent hashing more. Um, so this consistent hashing is actually an interesting, an interesting topic. Sorry. Okay. So it's an interesting topic, uh, and it is it, actually first proposed by a, a work by Jia et al. in, in two thousand five, uh, but under a different name. And then a recent paper by Filter they give a actually a better gap bound than ours uh, to be order D. Um, but then the thing is that their ratio their better gap bound cannot be really used in our case because their constructing is not streaming. So our hash is still the state of the art for streaming. Uh, but on the other hand, an interesting thing is that filter also showed a lower bound of omega d for this gap. <coughs> so does that mean our approach cannot give a better than order d at one pass? Uh, the answer is complicated. It's yes and no. Why I say no is that we actually observe that uh, what we need is, uh, can be relaxed. So basically, okay, so in particular, we can relax the notion of consistency, uh, to be, uh, for randomized, uh, so we, we can consider a randomized harsh function so that the consistency is only hold for the, uh, in the expectation sense. That is already sufficient. Uh, but then, uh, it would be an interesting question to ask whether it's possible to get a gap parameter to be little o of d under this relaxed uh, notion of consistency and uh, also computable in low space. All right, so that's the review of the hash function. Um, yeah, so let me just go to the conclusion then because of the limited time. Yeah, future directions. So um, as I said, the consistency hash function is basically, it is probably the most interesting technical object to study. Um, so for our current definition, as we said, 
it, it will be interesting to improve the order D for streaming because the order D currently known is not for streaming. And uh, for the relaxed consistency, uh, yeah, so can we do order uh, like little O of D? And also for the lower bounds, our lower bound works only for one pass. So can we like extend our lower bound to multiple passes or random order? Uh, moreover, there's an interesting question to ask for multiple passes. So for us, we show one, two passes uh, suffice for, for a constant approximation. Then can we say that, let's say if you use many passes, can we actually make it to be one plus epsilon approximation? Uh, this is not ruled out by any lower bound yet. Okay, finally, um, I, we think our uh, framework will be interesting or useful for other um, uh, uh, like geometric streaming problems. Uh, for instance, the, this important sampling, if you uh, can represent your objective as a sum of some RPs, then you can use the important sampling. And also this consistent hashing technique, uh, uh, we are the first to apply this in streaming, but it seems that there could be more applications of this. Uh, that's all for my talk. Are there any questions?